What's up guys? I wanted to make a quick video and uh, in this video I just want to go over something that not a lot of people know about and that is industrial jobs. Not just industrial maintenance but just factory work, industrial jobs in general. People don't know the opportunity that's out there so I just want to you know kind of quickly review a couple of the um, types of industrial jobs there are. Point is you can make a lot more money than you would think just working different types of industrial jobs. I've worked at a few different factories in my life and I want to share my experience with you guys. I focus my channel on industrial maintenance, specifically automation, electrical, and instrumentation. But in this video, I'm just going to give a brief overview of the different types of factory jobs that you can look into. And I just want to let you guys know that if you decide to get into an industrial job, there's a lot of benefits above an office job. Something that's pretty nice about working industrial jobs is you don't have to necessarily be polite or put on a mask or act a certain way. You can generally just be yourself and get the work done. When you're working in a factory, it's all about getting the work done and that's something that I really enjoy about it. So of course, if you're looking at working in a factory, you can get into maintenance like me. Also, there's engineering operations and supervision they're all pretty cool and i just want to run them down one by one give you guys a little bit of information so you can make an informed judgment call if you could could see yourself working an industrial job operations or operators are people who show up and they operate machinery generally your operator is gonna just have a, one or a few machines that they look over and they operate those machines throughout the day the procedures for things like cleaning tool changes all kinds of things and generally speaking the operators do a pretty big list of assorted tasks that are usually repeated you know from shift to shift and you'll have procedures and you'll just you know run the machines get the machines prepared monitor the screens you know maybe you have to refill some items as the day goes on and you just kind of have an assorted list of duties that throughout the day you accomplish and most factories are going to have a few different operators and you kind of split the duties up you're going to work on an operations team under a, an operations supervisor that operations supervisor is going to delegate the work he's going to attend a lot of meetings he's going to you know discuss what's going on with corporate and he's going to you know take part in deciding who's going to do what and how we're going to get the operation to run smoothly Generally in an industrial setting, you want to kind of follow a chain of command. So if you're not sure what to do next, you go to the next person up the chain and they're going to direct you and they'll, you know, handle all the communication. Guys, also there's one very important part that I forgot to mention while I was making this video. So I'm going to interject this message probably somewhere in the middle. So I'll actually get people to see it. Factories and manufacturing in general is understaffed. The workforce is very old and they cannot fill all the jobs out there. I'm telling you guys, trust me, the jobs are out there and they pay. If you know someone who works at a big factory, I promise you they're making more money than most of the people you know. Um, you can go and get a bachelor's degree and get something unskilled, but you're most likely going to make less money than, you know, just general factory workers. And, you know, working in a factory, doing operations, doing maintenance all of these jobs are very skilled jobs and it takes it takes on the job practice and experience to learn it and companies are willing to get people in there if they feel like they'll stay they'll train you you know if your job's very technical you need some education but the degree isn't going to do all of that much you need on the job experience but these companies are starving for people and i promise you guys if you're trying to figure out what you want to do and you're uncertain if you want to go to school and your parents are telling you to do this, I'm telling you, just look into it. Look at the job postings. You can make a nice living working in a factory with or without a degree. I promise you, and it's worth looking into. Back to the video. How do you get started as a machine operator? Honestly, I don't really know. You'll probably get some certifications or maybe go to school. I'm sure in a lot of situations, you don't necessarily have to go to school to get into these types of jobs. It always helps to have any sort of relevant experience. And just like anything else, you get a foot in the door and you work your way up the ladder. As far as uh, operation supervision, from what I've seen, it can be a stressful uh, position, but it does generally pay pretty well. And a lot of supervisors that I've met either have a degree or they've just worked their way up the ladder over the years working in operations. 
This is something that most people don't know. People who operate machines in a factory or supervise operations in a factory probably make a lot more money than you would expect. It depends on the size of the factory and how much money the factory is making. But, you know, on the low end, maybe some operators make, you know, in the teens. But there's definitely operators out there who are, you know, in the 30s or 40s per hour. And something I have noticed about operations in most of the places that I worked, generally they work like 50 hours a week. So it is not uncommon for someone in operations to make six figures or, you know, someone in an operations supervision position to be up in the, you know, 150 range. All right, so that's enough about operations. I'm not an operations guy, I'm a maintenance guy. I do automation and electrical maintenance. It should be noted there's electrical, automation, instrumentation. Those are all kind of interchangeable words. They all mean looking at the controls of these automated machines and repairing them and servicing them. Um, there's also mechanical maintenance. Generally, those mechanics are going to be referred to as maintenance technicians and then the electrical or controls guys are going to be referred to electrical instrumentation or automation technicians you guys already know if you watch my channel i absolutely love industrial maintenance i won't get into it too much but you're you don't have a whole lot of supervision you're given a list of duties and when things break down you're the first responder to go out there diagnose and resolve the issue i find that type of work very rewarding it does pay pretty well as far as positions in a factory go, um, <clears throat> maintenance is generally a position that's, you know, people really want to get into, whether it's mechanical or electrical, really depends on your personality type. Mechanical maintenance, you're going to be doing a little bit more heavy lifting, and uh, it's just different. I would implore you guys to just kind of take a look at it in your own time and see which one's a good fit for you. But if you get into industrial maintenance, you're not going to go wrong. There are, I'm in Ohio, there are a crazy amount of jobs in industrial maintenance right now. I do see the wages going up. Um, industrial maintenance personnel, again, your base salary is gonna be probably somewhere between, I would say at the low end, maybe the high 20s, and at the high end, it, maybe the upper 40s or lower 50s, and then a lot of factories will have the opportunity to work overtime if you want. So you know generally speaking people in industrial maintenance are going to be right around the six figure mark but there's definitely a good number below that are just working straight 40s or on the upper end you can go up higher it really depends on how much you want to work and you know as you get into your career you get more experience get better jobs and that's just how it works so that's operations operations supervision <clears throat> maintenance and then let's do a quick uh rundown of engineering as you guys know, engineering, you generally need a bachelor's degree to get into it. Uh, with maintenance, not so much. It's more based off um, certifications, experience. Generally, a lot of maintenance positions are gonna want you to have some sort of certification or a two-year degree. It just depends on where you're working and you know what your skill set is. A lot of that is just based off what you can do. With engineering, generally, you need to have a four-year degree. However, I have seen in the last couple of years, companies have become more lax on that requirement. You know, someone who really knows what they're doing with maybe a two-year degree could most likely get an engineering job if they wanted to. <clears throat> engineering is similar to maintenance, but they're going to do a little bit more decision-making and planning. They're going to, you know, have projects to improve the factory. There's different types of engineering, and in my opinion, they're all pretty interesting. You know, as an engineer, you can find yourself behind a desk a lot of the time, or some engineers are out in the field with the maintenance and electrical maintenance personnel working. Um, you know, on the floor, uh, again, I'm an electrical maintenance technician. I, my focus is automation, circuits, controls, instrumentation, things like that. And I genuinely enjoy my job, but it's the purpose of this video to let you guys know that there's other types of jobs and you can make a good living doing any three or four of these categories. So yeah, that's about it for the brief rundown. I'll give you guys a quick safety tip when you're working in a panel, try to just put one hand in the panel before you work on any live electricity, you wanna take a second to look around you. You want your feet on the floor. You wanna make sure you're wearing all your PPE. You don't want your body to be touching else. And if you can, just put one hand in the panel at a time. You move slow and you think before you make any move while measuring electricity. The last thing you want is for the electricity to run through your body or through your hand and out your side. If you do get zapped, you just want a little buzz through the hand which I've gotten before, it's not a big deal. 
So that's my mid video safety tip. Um, that's all I got on this topic. I have a whole channel about instrumentation and controls, automation, stuff like that. My videos are geared for people who are thinking about getting into it. I genuinely enjoy what I do. I'm trying to make these YouTube videos. It's hard to stay consistent, but I just want to say thanks for checking out the video. Check my description. I got some tools that I use, links from Amazon, and uh, I will catch you guys next time. Thanks.